Hello, I'm Joe DeWolf. If you're watching Expose, it is April 18, 2017, 1257 a.m. in Birmingham. Now, with the last blog, talked about September 23, and what I thought about this being maybe the rapture of the church or the beginning of the final seven years. Well, I got some more to say about that. Um, in the final seven years is when the mark of the beast is when someone, the Antichrist, will put together the mark of the beast, whether it be a chip that'll be in your right hand or your forehead or a number like a tattoo or just something that can be read when you walk into any place to buy food, to buy or sell or doctor anything. It's there. And um, no one really knows what it'll be. Guesstimates are a tiny chip, and I, I concur, I believe, in the same thing. But that has to have time to be implemented. That's not started yet. I mean, of course, they've been talking about it for 20 years, but it has not started, and it's not going to occur overnight. It'll take some time. It'll take time for this world to get up. Well, I say get out of order. That's not quite true. This world can get out of order fairly quickly and by what's going on today. But I want to tell you something. I listened and watched several years ago, and it was the best proof or evidence or someone's thought process on how Easter Island died out. First, these are facts. You have the Islamic Muslim world that according to their Bible, the Quran, it's okay for them to marry first cousins. And when you do that enough, you start having you start having confusion with the latter generations. It took our Air Force a long time to train a Muslim pilot for a C-30 transport. They just couldn't get it. Where normal people 40 hours, they're flying that thing. And um, so I'm just telling you what I know. And it's difficult. If, if you go back and read some history, 90% of them has never read a whole book. This is one they have seven um, Nobel Prizes. Six of them supposed to be with peace. You know. So you know where I'm going with that. Easter Island. A uh, man taught on that, on that geo, several years ago. He said the best evidence we have that there's no one here is because they inbred to the point of where they could not manage themselves. They couldn't understand how to continue to plant, to sow, and to reap, and to, and to steal your water, and to, you know, they just couldn't figure those things out. So the inhabitants of Easter Island died out because they got, they didn't get smarter, is my point. And if you look at the Muslim world, and I'm not saying all, I'm just saying those who ad adhere to the Quran, those who think Muhammad was still transported to a temple mount that wasn't there for 80 years. And the things that Allah told him to tell them to kill everybody who's not part of you. 
So you, you get my point. You get where I'm going there. And uh, so there's time. There's a time period that has to go from point A to point B to point C to point D. And we've not, we're, we're just at point A. And um, we've been in point A now for about, probably about 17 years. And um, that's a fairly good guesstimate because what was it back in 2000, people thought the world was going to end because the Mayan calendar quit. Well, when did we go by the Mayan calendar? I never did, but all of a sudden everybody's going by it. You know what I mean. So there's a lot of things that still have to happen, a lot of things. But naturally, we know God can make those things happen almost overnight. Nothing. Nothing can happen by happenstance. It is all prophecy. And if you take, as I mentioned earlier on a blog, a few blogs back, 16 fulfilled prophecies out of 100, you're in a billions of trillions. And you take a blind man to go in and pick the right number. That's how the odds are. But you you get up to 100 out of 100 prophecies being fulfilled. There's not a number that big. Forget it. There's not enough zeros. Forget it. So a lot has to happen. A lot has to come to pass before we get into the final seven years. And again, it can be done. God can do anything. And once I see that they say Damascus, and I don't know why they haven't called it yet. They should have, because Damascus is, for all purposes, it's already destroyed. And the reason Damascus was an important place because it was crossroads. It had natural springs throughout Damascus. And this is a area where the hubs met from Israel to other parts of Syria, from other parts of Western Europe, and um, or Northern Europe from there. And this is a, a just a honey hole full of springs. And they had a lot of food and trade going on. It was a giant city. And the street that went, went through it was called Straight Street. It was miles and miles long. But today, there's only a few little suburbs attached to Damascus that still have a few people, not many, very few people, and they're in hiding today. So no one is quite called Damascus has been destroyed. And then when you know that Egypt will come under a similar fate, but not in a definite period of time, it will be 40 years, but that will probably run on into the tribulation and into the thousand year millennium before the Egyptians will go back to Egypt into the millennium, maybe up to 20 or 30 years. So I don't, I think we have time. I think there's time for a lot of things and, and a lot of people not to panic, but I, I would, I would assume that tonight would be the, the last night. I would assume that because it might be your last night. One day, your soul is going to be required, and it could be tonight. And a friend of mine, retired police officer, went to his funeral recently, walking from his living room to the bedroom. His wife slammed. He slammed in the floor. She said, I knew right then that he had that, that heart attack because he already had heart problems. He dropped dead right there. In any case, I just wanted to tell you those few things to that you could add to the prior blog and that may put a little bit of light on it. And um, I just 
like everybody else, I want you to understand as much as you can and make educated decisions based upon what you know and what you feel like you can, who you can trust and what they say. And, um, but the best educated decision you can make in your life is save your soul. And there's only one that can do that. That's John 3, 16. Jerry Wolf exposed.